Good morning. I'm Wes Bazell, president of the National LGBT Bar Association. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm very honored to be joined today by Judy Shepard, the founding president of the Matthew Shepard Foundation's board of directors and the foundation's executive director from 1999 to 2009. Judy, thanks so much for joining us. It's absolutely my pleasure, Wes. Thank you. Uh, the last time we saw each other, I presented you the National LGBT Bar Association's highest honor for a non-lawyer, the Frank Kameny Award in August of 2019. Like so many others, I have distinct memories of October 1998, having myself just started to come out. Um, I was living in Washington at the time and attended the vigil at the United States Capitol for Matt. Uh, and I was honored to represent the National LGBT Bar 20 years later at the National Cathedral when Matt's ashes were interned. That was such a beautiful service, Judy. Thank you. You and your husband have always been there for our community. Your grief, your hope, and your vigilant fight for equality have been such an important part of the lives of so many LGBTQ plus people, including myself, uh, and we owe you so much. Um, so we really do appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Uh, we're here today to talk about the, the, what we call the LGBTQ panic defense. Um, can you tell me why it's so important for states to ban the use of the panic defense? Well, and at, the, at the very heart of panic defense is an issue of, of hate and it's the other or of fear, quote unquote, of the other. And that has never been, even though it's been sort of the black mark of the American people, it's not ever been acceptable. Uh, we've tried to move away from it for decades, centuries. Um, but it's just an example of we're still hanging on, just using the different um, to explain our own fears. And it's, it's, just not, it's just not who we should be. Um, and when, when Matt was murdered in, in 1998, his attackers tried to escape justice by claiming that Matt's sexual orientation was to blame for their violent reaction. Um, what went through your mind when you first heard that they were going to try to utilize the panic defense in the, at trial? Well, I really had two reactions. The first one was, well, of course they are. They're going to blame the victim for the crime because that's what always happened, right? You blame the victim for the differences that they are. They're, they're a person of color or a different religion or sexual orientation, sexual gender identity. Um, <clears throat> but it was, in my head, I'm thinking, Logically, panic defense, there's one of him and two of you. So really, how does that play into your story? And to the judge, uh, it was even sort of laughable. That's how he even knocked it out of their um, defense was that that just does, that makes no sense. He wouldn't allow it no matter how they tried to present it, which was really encouraging me because for the state of Wyoming, I thought that was a big step forward. Yep. We haven't taken many steps forward since but then it was. <laughs> it was, there small glimmers of equality uh, come out in, in even um, you know, sort of the states that, that we don't think um, have a lot of it. Right, right, and you'd think Wyoming would be shamed into it, right? Because our, we are the equality state, quote unquote, but we really don't exhibit it so far. Um, we're working on it, but we'll get there. It's always, it's always a journey. Um, well, you've advocated all over the United States and, and even the world in support of legislation to address hate crimes. Um, what advice would you give the people in our audience uh, as they reach out to their elected officials on this bill to prohibit the use of the LGBTQ panic defense? You know, I think one of the things Dennis and I have learned over the years is that is the power of storytelling. Um, when you make it personal, when you make it a story about a real person or a real issue, um, it's harder to discredit it. It's easy to hate the abstract, but when it's real and it's in front of you, you pay more attention to the story. You, you pay more attention to the result and lessons to be learned. And the power of storytelling should just never be forgotten. Exactly. I mean, it's coming from the heart um, and really touching people from, you know, uh, your own personal experiences or the personal experiences of the people that you love uh, really can be super impactful, um, especially in the legislative context. You're so right there. Absolutely. Um, well, in addition to sharing their views with their elected officials, 
what can our audience members do to honor Matt's memory and the work of the Matthew Shepard Foundation? Well, as we've, we're a very small organization. We're only six people. Um, so we're not a membership organization. To honor us, of course, you can go the route of donations. That would be most welcome. But honestly, in your local communities, um, the work, so much work needs to be done locally. And in regard to the LGBTQ plus community, even in states where things are seemingly all okay, legally you have job protections and adoption protections and you know all the things that would put you on evil footing with everybody else. There are states that don't have that. And we need to re remember that. This fight is not over. There is so much left to do. And the previous administration sort of made us turn the corner in the wrong direction. So we're really hoping that currently we can make some real change down a road of positivity and inclusivity. That's great. Yeah, and, and certainly the um, you know banning the use of the panic defense is is another way to do that and strengthening hate crimes uh, legislation as well. And so you know. Um, we really do want to thank you uh, and the work that you've done. Um, you are working to make our world a better place. And in doing so, you've actually made all of us better as well. Um, and you really have, you know, been there standing beside us and not just telling us that it will be okay, but telling us that you're going to fight to make it okay. And so for that and for your dedication, we really do appreciate everything you've done. You've done. Uh, we appreciate your personal strong support and the strong support of the Matthew Shepard Foundation uh, to ban the use of the LGBTQ panic defense. Uh, and we certainly look forward to working with you uh, on this issue for, um, for years to come as we get more states uh, to ban this defense. I so look forward to that much. as well. Uh, so I look forward to that. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks. We appreciate you joining us today. Of course. Thank you. Bye.